Welcome to the War Stories. In this episode, I'll be discussing the war between Eastside Wilmers and Westside Wilmers. Wilmington is a neighborhood in the Harbor region of Los Angeles, California. It features a heavy concentration of industry and has the third largest oil field in the United States. Nearly 20% of Wilmington's total land area is taken up by oil refineries. The majority of Wilmington is made up of low-rising, low-income houses and apartments. Looming over it all are the massive cranes and walls of containers of the Port of Los Angeles. It's the economic engine of this region. The port also is this town's nemesis, burdening it with the byproducts of world trade, industrial junkyards, heavy truck traffic, noise, and air pollution. Annexed to Los Angeles in 1909, along with San Pedro for the port, Wilmington has long served as an entry point for Latinos. Roughly 80% of its 56,000 residents are Latino. Just about every resident in Wilmington knows the dividing line. Avalon Boulevard slices this pocket-sized community in two, marking east and west. It's the unofficial border that back in the 1950s separated white residents from Latinos. The east-west divide endured for seven decades. Residents say they are from the east or west side of town. Gangs define themselves by the geography, calling themselves East Side Wilmers and West Side Wilmers. The West Side Wilmers are located west of Avalon, and the East Side Wilmers are stationed east of Avalon. The Wilmers gang began in the early 1950s. They consist of three subsets, North Side Wilmers, East Side Wilmers, and West Side Wilmers. East Side Wilmers has approximately 450 members and has several different cliques. The East Side Wilmers are known to wear red, while the West Side Wilmers' primary color is blue. East Side and West Side Wilmers once were unified and considered themselves one gang. Locals say that ended in a fight over a girl who dated a boy on the other side of Avalon. A boy from West Side Wilmers got jumped by six brothers from East Side Wilmers and has been on ever since. At that point, the gangs from the West Side and East Side of the Boulevard declared war. The town was divided. By 1988, violence between the two sets was at an all-time high. With eight killings in the span of a few weeks, on February 1st, 1988, Jaime is murdered just across the street from his home when a carload of East Side Wilma members fired two shots at Jaime, who was among a group of friends hanging out on the West Side. Authorities arrested four teenagers connected to the shooting. Jaime was only 14 years old. Six days later, on February 6th, Jose was driving with three friends after a late night party. Jose was a member of Eastside Wilmers. He made a U-turn and stopped at the intersection of D Street and Wilmington Boulevard. This intersection is located on the west side of town, meaning Jose was out of bounds. A half dozen youths approached Jose's car and asked him where he was from. A girl riding in the front seat recalled that she urged Jose to drive off or defuse the situation by saying he was from nowhere. Instead, Jose shouted, Eastside, and that was all it took. The youth sprayed the car with bullets. Girl took the wheel and sped toward Harbor Medical Center, but Jose died en route. Jose had been trying to get away from the gang life. He was attending church and junior college classes, but still, he couldn't resist the opportunity to rep his side of town. He didn't want to look stupid in front of his friends. On March 18th of that same year, Eastside women strike back for Jose's death by shooting a hardcore Westside gang member. He survived, but four days later, Raphael, who lives in East Wilmington, is shot and killed as he walked home from church. Police and gang members confirmed that Raphael had no gang affiliation. Authorities believe he was killed by West Side gang members. In the early 90s, there was a brief truce between the Warren gangs. The two factions had stopped fighting each other, mainly because former gang members convinced them that the community will reward them, but the community failed to provide them with alternative recreation and educational programs to occupy their time. The youth grew frustrated and turned back to the streets. The truce was short-lived. Two years later, it was back war time. The streets bled and violence carried over into the next decade. In the year 2000, Wilmington had a total of 45 murders, 39 of which were gang-related. On September 18th, 2006, Hector, who was a member of Westside Wilmers, participated in the murder of Sam, also known as Green Eyes. Sam was a member of the rival Eastside Wilmers. Five days later, on September 23rd, members of the Eastside Wilmers held a car wash to pay for Sam's funeral expenses on L Street and Avalon Boulevard. At about 6.50 p.m., Jose was walking on Neptune Avenue near his home in Wilmington. In an area claimed by the Westside Wilmers, Jose was aware of the rival gangs, but was not a gang member. As Jose got to F Street, he noticed a silver Honda approaching him. 
At first, Jose thought the Honda was his friend's vehicle. But when the Honda got closer, Jose could see it was not his friend's car. However, he recognized the person in the passenger seat as Jesus, someone he went to middle and high school with. In high school, Jesus associated with members of the East Side Wilmers. Jose and Jesus looked at each other. Jose did not want to stare at Jesus, so he immediately turned, looked straight ahead, and kept walking. Jose thought it was unusual that Jesus would be in an area claimed by the West Side Wilmers. The Honda slowed, then turned right towards F Street. No more than 20 seconds after Jose saw Jesus, gunshots let out at the intersection of Bayview and F Street. Manuel Lopez was lying on the ground and had suffered from six gunshot wounds, four of which were fatal. A little over a month later, on October 31st, 2006, Edward and his cousin Richard went to a party in Wilmington across the street from Manning High School. They met Richard's sister Jessica at the party. LAPD shut the party down at around 10.20 p.m. Edward drove Richard and Jessica from the party in his white blazer. They were driving towards Long Beach on Pacific Coast Highway when they decided to go to a taco stand in the opposite direction. Edward turned left on Eubank Avenue, then made a U-turn and drove back on Pacific Coast Highway. As Edward drove on PCH, a silver Nissan pulled up right next to Edward's blazer. Edward looked over and saw the driver. He was wearing a mask that had hair and bright yellow teeth, which made Edward think it was a wolf mask. The driver bobbed his head up and down and looked at Edward. Edward turned his attention to the road, then saw a flash in the corner of his eye. The driver's window of the blazer was shattered and a bullet hit Edward under the chin, on his arm and in the chest. Edward tried to catch the Nissan until he realized Richard had been shot too. Edward saw a police officer and swerved to attract the officer's attention. Richard died of a gunshot wound to the head. Jesus Miguel Cedillo from Eastside Wilma's was ultimately convicted of two first-degree murders and two counts of attempted murder. He was sentenced to two consecutive life terms. On Sunday, March 18th, 2018, Cesare was in the area visiting his friend Joseph, both of whom were from Westside Wilmers. They were both talking, standing on the sidewalk. At approximately 2.20 p.m., a male walked up and fired rounds at the two friends. The gunman then fled to a waiting vehicle. Joseph was taken to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead at 2.42 p.m. Caesar was also pronounced dead at the hospital. Fast forward a year later, on September 18th, 2019, around 3 p.m., Melissa was standing with a group of people who had gathered to memorialize Caesar, who was killed in that same location the previous year. At approximately 3.11 p.m., a male walked up and began firing into the group. Four people were shot. Melissa was pronounced dead at the scene at 3.20 p.m. Alex Gutierrez was also shot. He was transmitted to the hospital and pronounced dead at 4.49 p.m. Alex Gutierrez was the brother of Caesar, who was being memorialized that day. Two other women, a bystander in her 70s and another young adult, who was with the group were also wounded. I'd like to thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.